Hi everyone, we're here at Rab's Birchwood site to take a look at what goes on behind the scenes. Let's go. We're here in the warehouse and this is Matt, he's head of customer experience. So I basically look after all the customer facing teams here at Rab. Uh, we're going to go and visit a few today, uh, so we're going to go have a wander through the warehouse, uh, look at downfilling and also the service centre. So this is how down comes into us. Uh, it's all Eastern European sourced down. It's all RDS certified, which means it's third party traceable back to the farm that it came from, just to make sure it's, uh, it does come from the food industry. There's no nefarious uh, activities occurring around live plucking and the like. So we basically use this on site here at Birchwood for all of our sleeping bag filling and expedition filling, which we all of our down sleeping bags are filled here in the UK, which we'll go and have a look at in a bit. So how much, can what, what can you fill with one of them? Good question, <laughs> Dep depends what you're filling. So uh, the smallest item we'll do is probably a 200 gram sleeping bag. Okay. Uh, and then you'll go up to an expedition suit or an expedition sleeping bag, which could have uh, one and a half kilos of down in it. Wow. And how much does one of these weigh? I don't know, do you want to have, do you have, do you have a yeah, go? Yeah. I'm not sure. I'll pull. I reckon. What do you think? It's lighter than you think it's going to be, isn't it? But. I don't know. I'm not very, you try. No, I don't know. About 20 kilos, maybe? Do you, I do you think as much do you as you think? That? I don't know. There you go. Thank you. So with the, uh, with the small team that you can see here, we can fill up to about 1,500 bags uh, a week. So you can see the bags that we were looking at earlier. I don't really know that much about down, the different grades and stuff. Your higher grade down is basically uh, more down cluster than, than feather. Okay. Uh, so when you're getting up to your kind of 900 fill powered down, that will be a pure, pure down only with right. very, very little feather in it at all. Okay. Uh, it's a pure down that gives you the maximum insulation. Okay. So all of the little fronds on the, uh -huh. on the down here, they, they capture air and it's when you, your body heat then heats that up, right. uh, keeps all those little air pockets uh, okay. nice and warm and that's what keeps you nice and insulated. Only eight years ago we were still using these filling tables, uh, so you'd have three persons to one station, uh, you'd have a specification chart with how many grams of down goes into which baffle, wow. and then you'd hand fill each baffle uh, and weigh the down on these really accurate scales before then uh, blowing it into the blowing it into the associated baffle. So then we experimented with these uh, these machines. These are probably third or fourth iteration of the first machines we started using eight years ago. But now the brilliant thing about this is you can just have one person uh, fill the same amount of bags as three people used wow. to do on that table. So and what is this machine doing? So depending on what production run you're working on, uh, we're doing expedition bags at the moment. And then this little computer here, you basically choose the bag that you're working on or the jacket or the, or the expedition suit. Start at the bottom of the shell where the factory basically leaves two baffles open. Mm -hmm. Put the pipe in to the bottom baffle first, mm -hmm. press the button and it fills it with the exact amount of down for that baffle. Right. And then you go into the next one, it does wow. the same and you just work your way up until you get up to the hood. Uh, so I'm lying when I say it's fully automated now. <laughs> still, yeah. still, still hand filled. Yeah, still hand filled. Yeah. <laughs> right. Brilliant. Are these 1,400 gram? Yeah. So yeah, so these are the, our largest bags that we do, expedition bags. They uh, look so cozy. Yeah. <laughs> so then along the seams, all those bits that you can see that were purposely left unfinished, uh, they'll move on to this station here. You just see Dave finishing them off there. Uh, so they're then hand sewn. We're just waiting because I'm about to have a shot at filling one of these sleeping bags. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Do I hold it? Yeah, you have to hold it tight or it'll just flow everywhere. And then put the fork on that side. Yeah. That one? No, do it on the other one. That's it, and then that's that panel there. And then that's your next one. <laughs> Maybe I should come and yeah. get a job at Rab. There you go. <laughs> wow, thank you. 
So yeah, so after it's been filled uh, and it's been uh, hand sewn to just finish off those seams, uh, it moves over to this uh, QC station. So Jason just gives them a final check over. He uses that air ho hose that I just spoke about earlier just to get rid of all the down on you. There you are. <laughs> uh, gets, uh, gets all its tags, its uh, stuff sack added uh, and then gets put in its, uh, in its storage bag. I want a Rab sleeping bag now, that's so <laughs> cool to see. <laughs> so we used to send them out in cotton storage sacks. Cotton production is not the most environmentally friendly thing. So what we do now is we've got uh, fabric used up and uh, recycled polyester. Uh, so this storage bag will last you a lifetime basically uh, and hopefully the bag will last you the same amount of time. So one of my areas of responsibility is for after sales uh, and we're at our UK RAB service centre here. The service centre logo that you see up there is done in a modular way to represent all of the services that we currently offer. Morning all. Morning. 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 So this is where the magic happens. Uh, so everything that comes back to RAB uh, to be repaired will, will come through this facility. Uh, we're very lucky that we've still got uh, three seamstresses that used to work for uh, RAB back in the day in Sheffield, actually manufacturing RAB clothing. Wow. Uh, and three, well, relatively newish seamstresses that have come from other backgrounds that are uh, equally as skilled. So uh, the skill set in this room basically allows us to repair absolutely anything. So one of the other things we do through here is we still manufacture all of our expedition suits and expedition salopettes. And how many of these do you make in a year? Uh, I can make up to about 250. Wow. Uh, 250 suits, 250 salopettes. And how long does each one take? 10 okay. hours each, yeah, okay. Wow. So they get done in batches though, so mm -hmm. you, you'll, you'll see arms in a box yeah. and a hood in a box, uh, and then they get put together to, to make the whole garment. So yeah, so 10 hours start to finish. Talking warranty, so anything that comes back to us, we look to repair it uh, first and foremost. So is this a repair? Yeah, so that's a, that's a repair. So what we try and do for all warranty repairs and standard chargeable repairs is we'll do try and do an invisible repair as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas these ones that we upcycle, we, we spin it round and we just, yeah. it's a more sustainable repair as well because we can use any fabric that we've got yeah. uh, lying around. Uh, and it's also a good promo piece for us as well. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll badge it with um. a second stitch logo. We'll put a little bit of information on about what it is. Next step down, if we uh, can't repair it and send it back to the customer, uh, we'll still repair it to a high standard, uh, but we'll delabel it, we'll debadge it, uh, and we'll send it off to a few charities we work with. We've got two homeless charities in the UK, one in Sheffield, one in Cornwall, and another one in Nepal that supports high mountain villages. Uh, we don't debadge it because we're ashamed to be associated with, the, with those charities, but just purely from a health and safety perspective, because yeah. uh, they're quite high value pieces of clothing, obviously. If you've got a, uh, an item you accidentally damaged, we'll look at repairing that for you to an incredibly high standard. So how it currently works is you just go to the RAB website, go to the RAB service centre, uh, choose the garment you've got and then choose the repair type you want uh, and just purchase it like, a, like you would any, anything okay. else from the website. Wow. So you've got two repair choices, you've got your standard uh, invisible repair mm -hmm. uh, or you can choose a more sustainable yeah, I, I second like stitch that. repair. Yeah. Yeah. So if you rip your down jacket, uh, you can imagine if you put a big rip in that, uh, what we do is we'll basically cover the whole baffle with a, with a new piece of matching fabric. Once it's done, it'll be pretty much invisible bar. You might just see it ever so slightly thicker stitch line. How many repairs do you think you do? Yeah, so, uh, so chargeable repairs, so accidentally damaged items, mm -hmm. we did 9,600 last year. Wow. Uh, so if you think that's 9,600 pieces of clothing that might otherwise have gone to landfill. Yeah. So you can kind of see the amount of work that goes into even a, even a simple yeah. panel replacement. Lovely. I need to trim that yeah. so, you can, so you can't really see it. No. Obviously air was a slightly shiny just because it's brand new, uh, mm -hmm. whereas obviously this fabric's aged a bit. But, uh... Hey Lester, you all right? Hello. Yeah. So welcome to the washroom. We're, we're over capacity in this room at the moment. Again, why do, why do we offer this service? Uh, just to keep clothing performing for as yeah. long as possible uh, and helping customers um, achieve that. Uh, who tried to wash a down piece of clothing I'm before? I'm too scared to wash it, <laughs> so no. Yeah, well, the drying bit is the hardest bit yeah. uh, with a downfilled item. 
So all those little down clusters that are so great at holding air and, and warming that air up to keep you warm are also amazing at soaking up water if okay. you get it saturated. So uh, that's why if you put it through the uh, put it through the washing machine, uh, the wash bit's easy. It's just a normal wash cycle, but then the drying time takes a long, long time because okay. uh, you're trying to get that water out of the down. Waterproofs, uh, I'd say wash those every three to four months. Uh, Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Just have treats like any other piece of clothing. So uh, if you wash your, if you only wash your jeans once a year or never, then fair enough. But uh, no, I wash my jeans. Just okay, just check. Not my jackets. <laughs> You'll see that all the down when it comes out of the washing machine mm -hmm. will literally just be in a line at the bottom or mm -hmm. into one corner. That's why it's important that as it starts to dry, uh, Lester's patting it and manipulating it to fill out that baffle. To so make that's it. an electron same as this, so that will end up like that. That's, mm -hmm. that's only probably needs about another hour or so. Thank you for visiting us, Amelia. Uh, this has been our Birchwood Way site. Well, thank you. I mean, we've learned so much and it's been so cool to see. And yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to wash my jackets. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. And if you don't wash it, then send it back to will us and we'll do. sort it out for you. <laughs>